All right, I think we're recording now, hopefully. Hi. Hi, Armin. How are you today? Good, how are you? Fine. Uh, do you mind introducing yourself uh, to our audience and let us know why we're here and what we're talking about? Sure. Uh, I'm uh, Abbas Farsani. I'm an uh, American-Iranian uh, freedom fighter. And we are here to talk about the Iran protest, and I can say now Iran's revolution. Wow. Okay. So it's not just a protest anymore. It's, it's a revolution, right? Um, yep. I believe it. Hmm. A revolution is underway. Really? You think so? This is this has yeah. this uh, was the protest in Iran that in the past few days. It, uh, it's unprecedented. Like this is like we saw a couple of like we have we saw some protests in, t in two thousand nine. But and we also saw some protests in 2018, but this one is escalating faster than those um, like in the past four five days now, right? Uh, the amount of right. um, escalation, the number of deaths, the number of pro uh, protests, and the, the number of cities involved, the number of banks and you know uh, seminaries and. Um, um, gas stations on fire, uh, the amount of armies that it, like, the forces that the government is using in the streets to um, to tackle this is is escalated in five days way faster than what we saw even in 2009 because the 2009 was the biggest one after the Islamic Revolution of 1979. This is like in how do you do you remember how many people died in 2009? I, I don't uh, know. I'm not sure, but I know that I it, think something like hundred, something like hundred. Okay, but now and that, that was after two months, right? But now we're on Correct. day day five of these protests, and we're getting like minimum. The minimum estimates is 106, and the maximum. I think the uh, the reports that we're getting from the ground from people that this hasn't been verified yet, but people are saying closer to 400. I don't know how accurate is that, but the minimum I'm hearing is 106 people died, uh, the government um, shooting. And the difference between these protests right now in Iran, and correct me if I'm wrong, and the other ones is that the government didn't wait until, uh, like before, uh, they didn't start shooting at the people right away. That was like a couple of days after. This one, as soon as the protests start, Within 24 hours, they cut down the internet in the entire country. There's only 4% access to internet right now in the entire country, which is damaging the economy a lot. Like, they didn't wait. Like, before, it used to be, like, a couple of days after. This was, like, 24 hours after they cut down the internet. And also, they started shooting. But they it used to be before, when the protest started, they shoot, shot in the air. There was warning shots. But now, right from the beginning, they started shooting directly pointing at people from the very beginning. Uh, is that accurate? Is that an accurate um, comparison to the protest before? I think the protest before was a protest, but now, as I said, it's a revolution. Right. And this revolution, I think, is what it was underway uh, in many aspects of Iranian life. You know, for example, in political aspects, in religious aspects, in social aspects, in economical aspects. And for, I would say, for 40 years, the Iranian people tried to uh, uh, protest against the government in a civilian way. And even now, they pro start protesting in a civilian way. But as you said, they start directly shooting people. And they, they should uh, defend themselves as a legitimate defense. And we don't know uh, what's going on because everything is under, uh, behind curtain, behind wall. Uh, you said 200 people, but I would say, or 400 people, I would say it should be more than that. Even I heard some, something like thousands of people killed because we have no news directly from Iran, everything right. doing uh, behind the wall, and we don't know what's going on. It's the worst yeah. aspect of this revolution. Yeah, yeah, they cut down the internet, so it's really the report. I'm, I'm surprised how much videos we're getting, given that the entire like they cut down the internet. How do, how are these videos are making it out? Like obviously the report, whatever the report is right now, it's really hard to get the inf more information out, and this is why 
we're thinking that the estimates might be on the higher much higher than we're getting right now because most of the information is not getting out, right? Because the internet is shut. But given that the internet, they shut down the internet in the entire country, how are we getting all these videos? Like these people must be very tech savvy to be able to go around, um, like maybe take advantage of that 4% that is still um, not caught and somehow, because it's really difficult to completely shut down the internet, right? Uh, there people will find ways, but I'm really impressed about uh, of the number of videos that are ma able to make it out given the given the total shutdown what, um, and 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 I think once the internet does go back on we're going to get a, a flood of new videos and uh, evidence for uh, of the crimes that the government is committing right correct um, and it's not uh, only the we, not, we are not getting into, uh, the videos only from Iran it's some people can go through, uh, through the uh, borders or go mm -hmm. to, uh, to other countries and send some videos uh, to us. But still, we don't know what's going on. And it's the worst aspect of this revolution. Right. So um, b before I go to like, so um, and we're going to go through some of the pictures and videos that have made it out with you. Um, this is going to be more an, an analysis of what's happening on the ground and, and what the people on the ground are saying. Um, so... We, me, uh, me and Ali Riz, we did a political analysis and a geopolitical analysis with, you know, with Trump and, you know, Lebanon and Iraq and these protests and the, the political dynamics behind the scene uh, and what led to the protests and what the protests are about. So we're not going to get too much into that in this. Uh, this is going to be mostly about analysis of what's happening on the ground. If you are interested in that analysis, I'll link to that discussion that we had uh, on, sec on the Secular Judges podcast. Uh, the link will be in the description for that. But before we go into the videos, uh, the reason why you're such a great person to talk to about this is, be is partly because of your background, right? Were you, do you want to talk about your background and when you were in Iran, were you, you know, were you part of the uh, Basij or? Uh, technically, I would say I was a part of Basij since uh, high school. Mm. And uh, it was about uh, um, 20 years ago, 22 years ago. Mm. But when I went to college, I never been a member of Basij, you know. Okay, so. But yeah, at, at high school, yeah. So for people that don't know what Basij is, Basij is like the part of the IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard, which is the, it's kind of, it's, would you describe it as morality, Islamic morality police? So you were part of the religious um, enforcement. Uh, you used to be religious yourself and obviously, obviously, right? And you used to uh, be part of the organization that was in charge of enforcing religious morality in this in the streets right is that a accurate for right. somebody that doesn't know what Basij is is that an yeah accurate? yeah okay yeah but just to give some more opinion about myself mm -hmm. in, uh, besides the Basij uh, I would say that I trained in Iran at school to be a member of the regime mm. because I studied at Imam Sadiq University and it's a high-ranked university in Iran that they the mullahs in Iran and then ayatollahs in Iran established that university to make officials for the regime. And many of those students, uh, they are high rank uh, officials of the regime. But mm. after maybe I've seen the criminals of the regime and I quit Islam, as uh, I'm an ex-Muslim, I offer the uh, I quit Islam uh, hashtag or man Hastam in Twitter. So after those stuff, uh, I'm not... Uh, supporting the regime. I'm not supporting Islam anymore because I know uh, I know the criminals of the regime and their ideology. So, Did you become an ex-Muslim atheist when you were still in Iran or after after you left? No, no. When I was in Iran, I was an atheist, but I couldn't say so did, in public. Yeah. Did you first leave Islam, then lost... Then lost uh, and that's why you lost your, uh, your support for the regime? Or did you first lost support for the regime and remained a Muslim and then left Islam? Which happened first? Like, You, you know, we, it's, it's a process. We cannot say that it's happening at okay. the midnight or at, at the moment. It was no, no. a process. Yeah, but yeah. I start criticizing the regime. Then I start okay. uh, knowing about Islam because I studied uh, Islamic uh, studying. 
studies. So I studied studied Islam. I uh, think I thought about the regime. I thought about Islam. I studied about them, and then uh, long process, uh, little by little, uh, I quit Islam and I I became uh, against the regime. Right. So, but you first became critical of the regime before Islam, right? Is that I would say yes. Okay. Right. Okay. All right, uh, because, you know, s sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes for some people, they lose faith in Islam and then they lose faith in the regime because they left, because the entire legitimacy of this regime is based on Islam, right? Uh, so different people have different journeys, right? Uh, but actually, that's a good segue to this video. Uh, and once I play it, you'll see why. So I'm showing uh, the first tweet, uh, that I, uh, which is a video of one of the protesters um, and he's been beaten up during the protest. I don't know, maybe during the protest. Uh, I'll play the uh, I'll play the video, and I also I'll also translate. It's a short video, so I'll, bear with me. You're not going to be able to hear it. But uh, <laughs> امروز 27 هشت و نوود شیراز رفتار وحشی های خامنه میبینین با مردم عزیزمون اون از روحانی با او هم قول و وعد وعیدش این هم به فرما این هم نتیجه جوون ایرانی با هی طوری باشه باید به خاطر کچیکترین حقش همچین بلای سرش در بیاد بی ناموسا تا کی میخواین این رفتار وحشیانه و ظالمانه تون رو ادامه بدیم بابت چی؟ به خاطر چی؟ okay. بنیانتون داره فرو میریزه. دیگه تموم شد دیگه مردم فهمیدن این نسل هم اون نسلی نیست که بتونید جلوشو بگیرید نسلی نیست که بتونید با باج و با نفهمی بخواید باشون برخورد بکنید اینا همه فهمیدن تو شبکه های اجتماعی هر روز دارن میبینن که مملکت میشه right. so let me translate what the guy said so first he started with a Quranic verse um, which, which shows that not all of the protesters are anti-Islamic. Not everybody that is against the government, against the regime, is anti-Islamic. Like so we ha we have to, because a lot of anti people like me that is are against Islam, we shouldn't, um, you know, try to portray all the protesters as anti-Islamic. This obviously, this guy hates the government, hates the regime, the, the, the cameraman, but he also started. Reciting a Quranic verse, which was about, which was against the people that were, you know, brutal or something about the Zalamin or something like that, right? But then he continues swearing at Khamenei, and that was the beeping noise because he was swearing, so that was uh, beeped out. But then uh, he talks about this young person that he just wants b simple human rights, and this is how they respond to him. And so he's asking, "Is this how you respond to somebody that is asking for basic human rights?" And then he continues talking about the promises that Rouhani, the president, has made. So he's, first he starts swearing at Khamenei, which is supposed to be hardliners, but he also addressed the so-called reformers, which are which made a lot of promises that uh, a lot of people in Iran have seen no result from. So they're against both the hardliners and the reformers. Um, and then he continues in saying that this is like the, this generation. Apparently, this is a very young guy. We can't see, but that's what the cameraman is saying. You, he said, like, you can't. You, there's no way you could stop this generation. Um, and this is the video that was sent on November 18. It w was recorded on November 18. The cameraman actually dates. What this is what I like about a lot of these videos that are coming because people understand how important it is for people like us to be able to verify. They, a lot of these videos, the camera people or the cameraman or the camera woman, they give the location and the date, which makes it so much, it's so helpful that they do that. I'm so impressed how, how often in these videos, the cameraman is mentioning the location and the date. So this was in the city of Shiraz uh, and November 18th, so two days, two days ago. So these are pretty fresh. Um, so what do you think about, what do you think about this video? Yeah, I would like to emphasize on what he said about this regime is collapsed and all people are against this regime. That's what I, uh, I told you before. It's a revolution because the revolution is all in all aspects of, uh, of the life of Iranian people and all every people is uh, involved. So if you see, it said your regime is collapsed because all people are involved. And I think it's a really revolution because it doesn't matter middle class, lower class, 
big cities, small cities, villages, young people, old people, women, girls, uh, everybody involved. And uh, the regime doesn't care about it. And the regime start directly uh, shooting people. Today, I saw that they now they send a uh, tank to the cities. They start uh, directly shooting people with uh, automatic guns. So it means the mass killing. It's a genocide. It's a crime against humanity. Mm. And it's what we are seeing. It's, uh, it's a really um, crazy. Yeah. They, well, I'm going to challenge you on that because you're saying everybody is against this government. I don't know if that's a fair assessment. Like the, this government, I mean, it has much l less support com uh, compared to... I don't know, right after the revolution, the 1979 revolution, but it still does have a lot of support, even though it's significantly less. Um, I mean, in a country of 80 million, wouldn't you agree that at least 10 million people in Iran support this government? I don't believe 10 million, but I'm not saying that 100% of Iranian people hmm. support the regime. Of course, they have some support, they have some benefits, hmm. but uh, you heard the news, uh, some of the revolutionary guards Many of the Basij members, uh, some of the army members, now they are join, jointing uh, people, jointing the revolution. Are they? I so it means that... I haven't yeah. seen that yet. That, that's the, that's, that will be the game changer. Because right now, I don't see... Exactly. That, the, the only way this could change it, uh, the whole... The people could win. Like, the people cannot win by themselves. The, the, go the government has all the weapons and, every, and all the power. The only way that this could be a game changer is if some of the people from the Artesh from, and from the Sepa, um, which is the two main for, um, forces, uh, military forces in, in Iran, um, if some of them start joining the people, right? And you're saying you saw reports of that happening? I haven't seen that. Yeah, you know... I cannot confirm that because of the news, because of the internet, but I got a lot of news that many of the Basij and Revolutionary Guards members are arrested. Some of them are killed just because they, uh, they didn't uh, accept to uh, shooting people. Right. So this news is a lot. It's not only one or two. I got a lot of news about it, a lot of reports about it. So I'm pretty sure that many of them are joining the revolution, but... As, uh, as you said, we cannot confirm them. I can show you some news. I can show you some even videos uh, that, but we cannot confirm them uh, officially. See, in, t in 2018, we saw some members of Basij burning their Basij uh, uh, membership cards uh, on camera and sh using, showing that how, as I, I remember a lot of them telling that they, they joined the forces because they wanted to defend Iranians against uh, foreign forces they didn't want to point their gun at the iranian people and a lot of them like that's why they were burning their cars and joining the people but even though we saw a lot of that it wasn't enough and it wasn't enough for it to be a game changer right uh, i i i think like just and this is why um a lot of people are suggesting that do not violently attack the military. Like a lot of people shouldn't be attacking the military. Instead, trying to convince them to join the people, uh, because if you violently attack the military, it's going to be harder for you to convince them to change size. And that's exactly what you need. Um, I don't know. Like the in 2018, a lot of people said that this is it. This is the end. Um, but it didn't end up being the end. So what makes you think that this is different? I think it's different because it's, uh, it's more than that time. And in that time, it was kind of a conflict between two sides of the regime. But this time is not conflict be between two sides of the regime, revolutionaries. No. Uh, no, no, 2009 was a conflict between two sides of regime, but 2018 was also similar to this one. It was oh, you're talking about 2018. Yeah, in 2018, yeah, 2009, it was a conflict between the protesters were on the side of reformers against the hardliners. Uh, Twenty, uh, but by tw by 2018, people have given up hope on reformers, and they saw reformers and hardliners at the same as all part of the establishment, part of the government. And people were against the entire regime as a whole. Um, and now 2019 is very similar to 2018. It's people against the entire regime. Uh, it w they weren't on the side of the reformers. They, they, compl they don't, there are no political leaders that they support. Is they, they consider it a spontaneous, leaderless protest, right? So, But in 2018, we did see uh, um, a lot of people, or a lot of Basij members, 
um, burning their membership cards. But I think there needs to be some top members, uh, top uh, members of the Artesh or the Sepa to break ranks, right? That's when you know that, okay, right. this is the, everything has changed. Um, but I, I don't see it happening yet. I, and I don't know if it's going to happen. What makes you think like this time is different from 2018? I think in 2018, it was a uh, expand uh, protest, but this time, it's, as I said, it's everybody involved, big cities, small cities, uh, villages, everywhere involved, and all classes, middle classes, lower classes. So I think the, the, uh, the difference is this one. This one is... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. This one is different because it's more widespread, you're saying, because I, I can, I can exactly. actually... Uh, I so so to give a to give some con to understanding to the viewers how widespread this was. I got I got uh, I saw a report saying that more than a hundred cities got involved within the first few days. Like it f spread so fast, and it spread that fast without the internet. I have no idea how to like even after they shut down the internet, the protest like the, how did it spread so fast without people being able to communicate with each other. That was insane how many cities got involved so fast. Like this is, it seemed like it's, it's just ready to get set on fire. Like, by the way, the whole fuel, uh, fuel price increase, uh, that's, that's not the reason why people are protesting. Even, that's just, that was just a trigger. And that was just an excuse. People, people want to talk, the people, the protesters, they don't want the pri fuel prices to go down or anything. They don't, that's not, like, correct me if I'm wrong, because people just want any excuse to find to topple this government. These, this is what the protesters want, right? And even if you heard the chants, they were saying, like, uh, Benzin, Bahonas, I forgot the chant, but they were specifically, even the chant. Yeah, Benzin, Bahonas, Aslan, and Zomni, Shonas. That's exactly. The, the, yeah, go on. Yeah, the the gas price uh, is just an excuse, and the the, the regime itself, is the target it's the target so even the chant the people that are chanting there's they're saying to you that we're not protesting because of the fuel increase that was just an excuse for us to get out our target is to take down the regime right and it's very interesting because this is the difference between these protests and the 2018 one because the 2018 one started being about the economic situation and it took a few days until it turned into being about toppling the government this one from the very beginning, it wasn't about the fuel prices. From the very beginning, they said this is an excuse for us, all of us, to get down out. It's about taking out the government right from the get go, right? Is that accurate? Right. Right. Okay. Yes, I think it's, you're right. And you know, the people said that for 40 years, they said, Chelsal Hunger is in Bastardiga Mistim. It means that for 40 years, we, we, we cried, we, we, but we cannot bear that again. We, we stand against the regime because 40 years, uh, 40 years we, uh, we had patience. wait for the wait, wait. changes, we wait for uh, improvement, we wait for uh, something happened, but nothing happened. Now we, st we stand against the regime until we overthrow the regime. Right, right. So when people say 40 years and 40 years, they're talking about ever since the Islamic Revolution uh, in 1979. That's what people are referring to. Right. Like they're saying, we, we after the Islamic Revolution, we've been waiting 40 years and we had enough, no more patience. It does seem like uh, the, another difference between the, the, these protests or revolution, as you call it, uh, compared to the other ones, is that a lot more poor people are involved, right? Then the other ones, like... The 2009 one was more upper class people. The 2018 one was a bit of mix of both. Uh, but this one, the 2019 one, seems to be led by poor people this time. Is that like the people that have nothing else to lose? Is that accurate? Yeah, agreed. Okay. Um, so this, the next, the tweet number two is um, a little bit of a country, you know, different from the sec first one because you saw the first one was by a protester that started with the Quranic verse. So you could see that somebody that was anti the government but still was Muslim enough to use a Quran verse. But this one shows images of people burning Qurans 
and Jose. Jose is like Islamic seminaries, right? Is that the best translation I have, right? Um, people are, and these are, uh, there are multiple, uh, tweet number three also, I think, is another picture of people burning Qurans. And reports of burning, people burning Qurans um, is coming from multiple cities. And given that there is no internet connection, it doesn't, and these people haven't been communicating with each other, it's very interesting that in multiple different cities, people are going after Qurans independently without actually going after Islamic, um, you know, after the offices of uh, Friday Imam, uh, you know, Imam leaders. I don't know if people understand what I'm talking about. Like, the people that are the head the of Imam Jum'eh, Imam yeah. Jum'eh, yeah, but the Imam Jum'eh is not just a person of e the Imam Jum'eh of every city, the person that is like uh, every Friday people go to the mosque and pray behind, every city has one of those. But these are not just people that you pray behind, these are supposed to be their l religious leaders that take directions directly from uh, the supreme leader, supreme religious leader, and they're supposed to be I his agents in every city, right? So people are going and burning their offices. People are going after religious ins Islamic institutions and seminaries, and people are burning Qurans without talking to each other, without coordinating each other. It seems like this is such a main, uh, such a huge, um, you know, grievance from people that even without talking to each other they are going after this like this they see this islamic influence as something that has as a curse to the country right but but this is not obviously what everybody uh, thinks because we have um what i've noticed is that some people are going after islamic institutions and quran and burning them during these protests but some other protesters are against that and think that this is going to make some cause division between protesters, right? Uh, and because a lot of protesters are Muslims and they do not want to be grouped in with some some of these protesters that are burning the Quran. What are, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, you know, uh, I would like to explain it a little bit more. Um, uh, I think the, there is a message in doing this. The message is that you, uh, your ideology that based on that you are killing the Iranian people is Islam. Mm. And Islam is your ideology. And in Quran said that you can kill your opposition. You can kill other people that they are not thinking like you. And I studied the religious studying. Uh, I know that the Quran think about this and you know that too. So when they are starting to uh, uh, fire up the Quran, it means that we don't believe in your ideology. Mm. Yeah, we respect all re uh, religious people, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we respect all beliefs. And if I believe even in Quran, say that, you know, you should kill other people just because they don't believe like you, it means that they don't believe in that. And I would like to add something else. Uh, you, I, I'm sure that you know about it because you were involved in that. Twice, I, uh, <coughs> sorry, I offered Iranian people that share their uh, experiences how they quit Islam. And it was amazing. It was really amazing. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Hundreds of thousands of Iranian people, uh, they uh, support this uh, trend. Uh, they trend the hashtag man mortata that means I quit Islam and I'm an atheist. Uh, it was amazing. So it means that, as I told you at the beginning, it, it's not a, just a political revolution. It's not just an economical revolution. It's in all aspects of Iranian life. And one of these aspects is religious active, uh, aspects. It means that they don't believe in the ideology of the regime. Although millions of Iranian people are still Muslim, not all of them are quitting Islam, of course, but they don't uh, believe in Islamic regime anymore at all, at all. So it's, it's the message of burning Quran, and they don't burn in Quran in, in a, um, in a, I don't know, in a mosque, in a, a small villages, they burn Quran, Quran in the mosque that the Basij members were gathered together over there. Mm. So it means that they, they burn a center we, that they start killing Iranian people. It's not just against their religious beliefs. Well, I don't know. I mean, a lot of them are against the religious belief. I mean, to be fair, there's people in Iran that absolutely hate everything about Islam, right? Uh, and and I mean, I um, I am against Islam, not against Muslims. But to be fair, there are a lot of these exactly. protests. But but to be fair, a lot of the protesters um, are against both. A lot of the but and and also we have the other side as well. 
of people what how do you respond to the people that say that this is not good because a lot of we're going to lose unity a lot of the people that are against the regime are muslim and if we go burn the quran maybe they would not want to participate in the protest and they would not support the protest because they don't want the protest to be anti-islamic how would you respond to that uh, i would say that uh, islam is not just a religion if if we have a secular regime or a regime that is not religious or a liberal regime we don't care about people religion but now we have a religious regime that they killing people based on those beliefs so it, it, it doesn't mean i told before it doesn't mean that we are against uh, muslim people we are against islamic uh, uh, regime that killing people based on these beliefs mm -hmm. so and you know all people they don't act uh, in a rational uh, basis you know they are killing people they need to respond somehow how they can respond it's, it's just a response it, it maybe it, maybe it's not the best response but mm. still is a response it's, mm. it's what they can do in a in this situation we cannot blame people uh but we have to understand the situation the situation is not a normal situation the situation is not in a secular regime in a secular regime never nobody's doing that never do that but but in a religious regime that killing people based on these beliefs is just a response. I, I mean, I don't know. I live, I lived in a, I lived in Canada, which is, which is a secular country, and I burned the Quran in a secular country. By the way, I'm not going to. Understand. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you guys why I did that because I already made a video on why it's why it's okay to burn the Quran because a lot of people compare me to Nazis and stuff when I do that. If you want to know my explanation, just search on YouTube why I burned the Quran, Armin Nafabi, and you, I, I, I explain. I respond to every single critique um, of against people people like a lot of atheists tell me that armin you did the wrong thing to burn the quran and i respond to every single criticism there so go watch that video just search for why why i burn the quran armin um but so but, i but, have a question why, why you didn't burn why you didn't burn for example a text from buddhism why you didn't burn a text from christianity i think even in canada even if i burn the quran in america Wow. Uh, it's, a, it's a reaction to the Islamic regime. It's a reaction to uh, Islamic crimes. It's a reaction to ISIS, Al Qaeda, Taliban. Mm. Well, it's personally, a, a reaction to 9/11. Well, personally, because people told me I shouldn't. That's why I burned the Quran. If people told me that I shouldn't be burning the Bible, I would probably be burning the Bible because I just, I, I just bring, I just would. I'm in the business of breaking useless taboos, <laughs> right? So if it's a taboo and it doesn't it doesn't harm anybody, I try to break it because it's a useless taboo, right? So it's a taboo. That's why I break it. There's not much of a taboo for burning a Bible. That's why I didn't burn the Bible, right? Uh, and that's why I burned the Quran. But if people told me like, I mean, it's wrong to burn a Bible, I would like, okay, it's time to burn a Bible. Uh, but that but that's a different topic. But what um, but what would you tell a Muslim? Let's say I'm. Let's say I'm. I'm gonna play the Iranian Muslim. Okay, you're like, okay, fine. Uh, I understand why you you're saying. Oh, this is what people are doing. They're not against. Um, this is it's understandable. But I'm gonna tell them like, listen, I'm an Iranian Muslim and I hate this government and I want to topple this government as well. But I don't want to join your protests because you guys do, like. I don't want you guys to be in power because you guys are being so disrespectful against my religion. Um, so I'm not going to support you guys because you're burning Qurans. What, what, do you, what would you tell me if I, if I was saying something like that? So, again, I would like to uh, compare. To, uh, I told you twice I yeah. asked people to share their experience how they quit Islam. First right. time was about two years ago, more than two years ago, I think. And at that time, yeah, many people say, no, we cannot do that. And I, sh I uh, share the burning Quran uh, campaign, too. And at that time, they said, no, it's not good, it's against unity, it's against uh, people's uh, beliefs. But the second time was about less than one month ago. But this time, nobody, uh, I would say, uh, nobody told me that, no, it's not against uh, mm. uh, unity of people. I think that people are uh, now aware that the uh, core problem, the root, is uh, the Islamic belief, the Islamic regime. So but that's, they but, but, that. but that's no, no. But you're talking about the anti. You're talking about this is what people. When you say people understand, you're talking about the anti-Islamic Iranians, right? 
I'm telling you, what are you going to tell a Muslim Iranian that w is on your side when it comes to being against the government? You cannot be. You cannot tell me that. Oh, most people because Iranians understand that Islam is this and this and this. Well, no, I'm I'm t I'm talking to you as a as if I'm a Muslim. So I'm not on. I'm not with you when you're against Islam. I'm only with you when you're against the government. So what would you tell me? Because that line of reasoning only works. On people that are, I agree with you that Islam is bad, right? No, I, I told you, I told you that is not a anti-Islam response. It's it, an anti-regime response. No, this is an anti-Islam response. This is an anti-Islam response. So, like these people see the po these people that course, are burning the Quran are anti-Islamic, huh, right? Anti-Islamic because there is an Islamic regime in Iran. So, uh, I think that the first point. The first uh, direction, the first target is the regime. And the target is Islam too, because the root of the regime is Islam. Hmm. So I think so, that uh, the, the first uh, target is the regime itself. And because the regime is the Islamic regime, it's targeting Islam too. That many of the, the Muslim people say that we don't need an Islamic regime. We don't need a religious regime because, uh, because it, it, this, this destroyed the religion itself too. This, uh, uh, so they want to be religious, but they don't want to uh, any crime, every uh, genocide, every killing people in the street be a part of their belief. Right. So can I, I think? Yeah. Can, can I tell you what I would tell to that Muslim? What I would say to that Muslim to be able? Sure, to, please. Okay. What I would tell them, okay, let's say like I cannot. Con let's say I'm talking to Muslims that we're not gonna. We're, I'm against Islam, therefore Islam. And there is no way that we're going to get united on that, right? But I, even though we're not going to get united on that, we, I want to get their unity against the government. This is what I would tell this, these Muslims. They're like, listen, before this Islamic Republic of Iran, Islam was a lot more respected among the Iranian people compared to now, right? I tell them that this Islamic Republic has r ruined... I mean, I think Islam deserves to have a bad reputation, but... Always, even without this government, but is to to be honest, you have to admit that if even if Islam is a good religion, this Islamic Republic has convinced more Iranians that Islam is, uh, you know, is horrible. Right? The more there are more people in Iran that hate Islam because of the Islamic Republic. Um, you know, than anything else. Like I, I as an anti-Islam critic. Uh, could have not done a better job at convincing people to hate Islam relative to the Islamic Republic, right? So me and me and my entire people, all the anti-Islam activists, could have not done a better job, right? So I say, like, if you if you do not what like people being so anti, if you want to convince people towards Islam, even though I would fight against you ideologically with, um, in that situation. Um, you would have a better chance doing that in a secular democracy than under an, uh, under an Islamic Republic. It would be easier for you to convince, you know, to get people to try to talk to people out of being so anti-Islamic um, in a secular democracy compared to a regime that is using Islam against the people so much. But uh, in a secular democracy, uh, uh, if Iran ever becomes a secular democracy, I will fight against you ideologically, not you know, not physically. But you, we will be on an equal footing ground in that battle. Like we will be, it will be a fair fight. Right now, you're at a disadvantage compared to me because it's so easy for people to show how how, how destructive Islam is when they're living under an iron fist of Islam. Right. So, what do you think about that? Yeah, I definitely agree with you, and I would like to add something, uh, as I told before. So we are not against Muslims, we are against Islam, and we need to separate Islam from Muslim. We respect Muslim people, but, necess but not necessarily Islam itself. And I have a Persian poem, always uh, I respond to uh, the critics about it. I said, it means in this world, all colors is beautiful. The only color that is not beautiful is hypocr uh, hypocrisy. Because if you say something and uh, act something else. Uh, so I think all colors is beautiful. Your shirt color is different than my shirt color. And all of them is beautiful. But the problem is when you want to impose 
and uh, asked me to, you must uh, wear my shirt color. My color is the best. If you say my color is the best, it's the start of the problem. So mm. I think all religions are kind of beautiful. Maybe some of them are not beautiful like Islam. I don't think that Islam is beautiful, but mm. uh, we are not... Uh, against the Muslim people, yeah, we might be against uh, Islam, I am against Islam, you are against Islam, but uh, we try to, in, uh, to, infor uh, to inform people, to aware them about uh, Islam itself, and they have the choice to quit Islam, or stay in Islam, or just uh, worship God in a way that they like it, but if you say that my religion is the, my religion is the best, and you should be... Uh, accept my religion, it's the start of the problem. So uh, the regime, it's what the regime doing and what the people are against it. Because the regime say that Islam is the best and our regime is the best and even the Shi is the best and even the Velayat or the, uh, as you know, the, uh, the Mullah's regime is the best and you should, you must obey us or you will be killed. So it's a problem. It's the start of the problem. It's the main problem that they want to force their belief uh, and the people not accepting that, then they start killing people, is the problem. Right. And it's the problem that well, why they start burning the Quran, why they start uh, protesting against the regime, and why this uh, revolution happened. Right. But by the way, I am, when I post these pictures, there's always that one guy that says these are, this is fake news. And I don't know if these people don't know how to do some basic research online. Uh, it's very easy. I just want to show people just do a reverse Google image search and you will go directly to the source and you can check the dates and you get in just like I did here and you're going to be able to see that these that the fact that these images are new. They're not from other news sources from before for somewhere else because you could check the dates of the late of the images. You could see that all of them are past a certain date. You could see that they're directly to the source. You could see where, where who was reporting on it. It's very easy. I don't know why people be, don't do like some basic research before claiming this is fake news. Um, is you know, I, and and people are like, oh, this is fake news, and like, oh, and like, why would I? And, and I usually don't respond to them because it took me like five, five less than less than actually a minute to be able to verify that these are uh, true. Like, and I'm, if they're not going to spend one minute to do their own research, I'm not going to respond to them, right? Um, but in the next in tweet, the next tweet also number three uh, is also. Uh, by the way, um, because I can read Persian, I could really easily verify that the stories are true. It's true, but even if you can't, you could use Google Translate. It's pretty easy. Um, but another thing, the next image is also uh, burned Qurans from other cities, right? And this was e even easier to verify because the news organization put their stamp on it. Um, uh, but we also saw videos of uh, people fr from these, from the host. And, you know, but here's an interesting thing, okay? Um, yeah, and this picture is from Fast News. It's, this picture is from the yes. official news in Iran, and they th they try to uh, tell people that see they are against uh, your belief, and you should be against them. Right. But I have it, I have an answer to the people uh, that you said uh, they said that uh, they are fake news or uh, whatever. We have a, 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 a proverb in Farsi. They said you can. Uh, wake up some someone that is asleep, but if someone pretending that is asleep, you cannot uh, wake him up. <laughs> okay. So no, I don't care about those people because they pretend to uh, are asleep, but they are not asleep. Right. Um, so the interesting thing is the, the hardest thing to verify is which actions are committed by the government and which actions are committed by the people, right? Because we know we have seen in tw we have video evidence from 2018 that the government does go and cause extra destruction on stores uh, and other places to to blame it on the protesters. Like we have actually have videos of the besiege and the near into Zomi going out and destroying people's cars and claiming that the protesters did that so that the you know that so that they could use that as a way to get more people against the protesters right so we've seen them do that right so to me and we know that they're capable of that and that is a strategy uh, and during these protests there were some hospitals that were burned out right 
Uh, and a lot of people are saying the hospitals were not the protesters. That was the government, right? Uh, to blame it on the protesters, right? Um, I would, I don't, uh, I'm willing to believe I that. I never heard that hospitals burned. I never heard that. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I never yeah. heard that hospitals burned. Yeah, there were some hospitals that were burned down. But, prot but the interesting thing is that the people that are against the protesters are saying this was the protesters. Um, and the, pe the people on the side of the protesters are saying that this was not the protesters. This is the government burning down hospitals. And it's, it's just a way for the government to make the protesters look bad, right? Um, I mean, there's no way for us to verify any of these. But we do, we can verify that the government has done tactics. They haven't gone as far as burning down an entire hospital. But I have seen videos... Uh, verified videos of them destroying cars to blame it on the protesters. So it is part of their playbook. I don't know, but not to this extent at the, at, at the entire hospital. So we, but there's no way for us right now to verify who's telling the truth. But the interesting thing is that when it comes to burning the Qurans, um, you know, the people, the the people that are and against the government are and also anti-Islam are saying, yes, this was the protesters. But the people that are ag against the government, but not against Islam, they're claiming that this was, the this was the government. I don't believe that. I don't believe that the government will go as far as burning Korans to make the protesters look bad. Like, this is not something that they're emotionally <laughs> capable of doing. And I think this is a desperation of some of the... Some of the anti-regime i've seen some even some people from uh that are supporting the protesters outside of iran making content and saying oh no this is the government i think that's nonsense i think that the quran burning is definitely the protesters do you agree yes i do okay okay but it's very interesting to so. see i how people decide who is the government who's who like which actions is by the government and which actions is by the people, not based on logical reasoning, but based on what they want the protesters to do, right? So the people that they're deciding like, okay, this is the government because I don't like it. Oh, this is definitely the protesters because I like it. They don't go based on logic and evidence. They just go based on their, where, their ideo uh, where their ideological leaning is. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, you know, the, the problem is that everything right now is behind curtain. Everything is right now behind wall. We cannot f confirm. We don't have any uh, journalist, that, uh, any journalist that confirmed this, any journalist that is not uh, uh, depend on the regime. Right. Uh, and, you know, we, we heard the news that, for example, uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, Al Al Taliban, ISIS, they hide in school, they hide in hospital, uh, even they do something that uh, they want to pretend that the people did it. So I think it's kind of a thing that the regime is aware of it and they try to uh, evoke the emotions of the people, religious emotions of the people right. to be against the uh, revolutionary people. Yeah, so, the, so even though it is the protesters that are doing this, the government, I saw TV reports from the government that is trying to use this as a way to show uh, how bad the protesters are. Like they're showing, showing it on TV, like how, as a way to like, look, these protesters, it's very, it was very interesting because they were, I saw the Saddam Sima, the TV from Iran, they were saying like, they, they're burning hospitals, they're burning labs, they're burning people's properties, but worse at all, they're also, they're even burning Qurans, like, oh no, like, really, that, that is the worst thing, is that, like, it shows how their priorities are, like, this is, like, they let, they left the last, the, the best for last, the, the most shocking part, that they were sh trying to show the people how bad the protesters were on TV, they're, like, they even burn Qurans, like, oh no, like, that's it. that's how evil they are, which is very interesting because they think burning Qurans is worse than burning hospitals, which that's, it. okay, no. And right, let's go to yeah, the... I would like yeah. to add something, yeah. uh, sorry, I would like to add something. In 2019 protests, uh, the Istadaw Sima, the uh, Iran TV, they showed a, a bill, a, a money, with a picture of Ayatollah Khomeini, and they show that the people burned that, and it, it, it worked. Because 
at that point, you know, the propaganda was really strong and the, some people maybe uh, impact on some people. But right now, even hundreds of Quran burned and nobody cared because the people are right. uh, aware. The people are know that the prob- what is the problem? What is the problem? The, the protesters are, are not against the, the Muslim people. They are against the... Uh, Islamic ideology that rules Iran, killing uh, uh, Iranian people. Um, I, I don't know. I, I do see a lot of protesters are against Muslims as well. But I do think that I agree that this might backfire on them showing this on national TV because there are a lot of people that they might they might they might want to shock the Iranian people to be against the protesters. But I suspect a lot of people are watching TV and they're like, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> like, "Oh my God, they're burning the Quran. That's amazing!" <laughs> right? So I think like <laughs> they might actually recruit, like getting a lot of hope for how brave the protesters like the protesters are that they're actually burning the Quran. And maybe they maybe it backfires, pro, you know, propaganda wise. I don't know. Uh, it's really hard to tell how not how the not demo, you know, how uh, many people are anti-Islamic because there's no reliable polling in Iran, right? Everybody everybody exaggerates the people on their side, right? you know what I mean? Uh, the government exaggerates the people on their side. The anti-government people that are Muslim exaggerate the people on their side. The reformers exaggerate people on their side, and even the ex-Muslim anti-Islamic atheists, I think even they exaggerate the people on their side so and i i trust none of them even people that are on my camp which are the atheist ex-muslim anti-islamic people i don't trust their numbers either uh, because there's no reliable polls coming out of iran right now so i i'll i just people i just tell them i don't know and and nobody knows i think right do you agree with that nobody yeah yeah definitely yeah definitely yeah yeah i i i, I i'm not saying that they are not i said that they are not against muslim I mean, say, I mean that they are not necessarily against Muslims because some of the Muslim people, they have some beliefs that they are not true. So if they have some beliefs that they are not true, if they are start killing people, they are against those Muslim people too. Right. But uh, your belief yeah. is your belief if you don't uh, Im- impose your belief on other people. No, I mean, I, I'm, on, I'm on your side. Like, I am against Islam, but not against Muslims, right? I agree with you there, but but I do not think... What I have seen among anti-Islamic um, people from Iran, a lot of them are not like that. A lot of them agree with me and you, right? Especially people that work with Atheist right. Republic from Iran. They are on, on our side. They're like, yes, we're against Islam, but we're not against Muslims. But there are a lot of people in Iran that consider anybody that is a Muslim deserving of like it's a it's a traitor to the country they deserve to die they're worthless people there's a that attitude also exists and it's very common among anti-islamic people in Iran like we we shouldn't we shouldn't hide that because it is a problem among a lot of anti-islamic activists in Iran didn't you agree I would like to yeah definitely I would like to maybe go forward okay uh, yeah uh, yeah, let's see some videos that they are directly shooting people or whatever. Okay, let's look at this video. This is a video from recent protests. You know, do you see that one? Which which number is that? Do you know which one I'm talking about? This is number uh, four, three, six, eight. This is number four. Okay, I'm gonna play the video. It's a one minute long okay. video. Just bear with me. I'll describe it as it's happening. It's a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of government forces uh, just basically moving into arrest for the protesters. This is in Shiraz. This is again from November. Okay, I'm going to stop it. People get the idea. Actually, I'll just keep playing it without the audio. Um, yeah, so there's some tear gas going on. It just shows a lot of people, a lot of government forces in the street. And this was from two days ago without the Artish moving in. So I suspect now it's even more. Um, but a lot of the videos that are coming out is from Shiraz. Actually, let me let me play the last tweet as well from Ali Reza. OK, because that's also goes along uh, the same lines. This is also which one is this? This is uh, this is a different city. 
Mary Vaughn. Okay, let me play this one as well. This is the one that you sent me from Ali Reza. This one has some um, bullets in it. Let me just play that. Yeah. Where's the audio? Oh, well. <laughs> This one is crazy because I can hear uh, gunshots, but people are not like running. Usually, like I see, like before when I saw a uh, video um, from 2018 and 2009, you see protesters moving forward, and then there was a single gunshot, and everybody would be running away, right? Just one single so right. gunshot in the air, and people would be running away. But now the videos that I'm seeing is that you hear multiple gunshots, and people are still running towards officers and throwing stuff at them. Like, these are people that are like, they don't give a... I, I'm not going to swear because I want to make sure YouTube doesn't de uh, deprioritize this video. But these people stop caring about... Like, th th they're becoming braver and braver. Like, I, this is in, crazy. Like, I don't know. Like, you can, these people are throwing stones at people that are actively shooting at them. And they're not even running away while the while the officers are shooting at them. Like, what, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I would like to a little bit uh, go for, uh, forward about these two videos. On the first videos, we saw that uh, the police, uh, they are kind of, they don't have self-confidence. They are not well organized. Mm -hmm. They are spread out. Uh, so it means that they can, they, they might be have the enough... Uh, order to be against the people but they cannot be do that they are not they don't have self-confidence mm. in the second people we see that the, uh, the people in marijuana in western of iran they conquer the city and the regime is still shooting them it means that uh the, the situation became worse but the people are uh, stronger and the people are the strongest actually Mm. And um, I think that the Iranian people now, they, they know that the Iran is a conquered, uh, Iran is conquered with the Islamic regime and they are hostages. They try to uh, free themselves. They, they try to free their countries. And I think they can. But, you know, we saw videos today that they sent a tank to the cities. They start uh, uh, shooting people with automatic gun. It means that it's, it's a game changer. And in that situation, I hope that people can fight against them. But at this point, we need a game changer too. Some people may may not agree with me, but I think if they start killing people in a mass numbers, I think we need uh, support from the uh, world community. We need support the U from the UN. We even need the support from the United States. I heard that uh, the United States uh, uh, send uh, the navies to Persian Gulf to. Uh, Almost straight, uh, and uh, I think that at some point we need a game changer if the people cannot defend themselves. Some people maybe not agree with me, but at some point we might be need uh, uh, support from the United Nations Army. We need, we might be need support. We might be need some controlled attack that support people. Uh, so. I think so, it's a game changer. It should be a game changer, and I think some of the uh, officials in the United Na in the U.S. Uh, thinking right. about it to support people even through the uh, well, uh, army solution. I don't think. Well, I mean, United Nations Army is a joke, and I mean, it's it's not a joke when it comes to peacekeeping, but it it, it cannot be a. It doesn't. It doesn't work like an. Ag it never works as an aggressor. So it can't just send an army somewhere. But um, but I do have my opinions on foreign uh, intervention. But um, uh, I already just dis discussed those with Ali Rizmi on secular jihadists. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to get into that much detail over that. The link in the description. We went over a lot of details um, regarding the Iran protests and the foreign intervention and both our, both our opinions on it. But it was good to hear your opinion on it. One thing I just note, um, noticed in Ali Reza Nader's tweet here that I didn't notice the first time is that right here, you see, there's a dead body in the corner. Did you, have you see, did you see that? And to me, that is, you know, okay. Yeah. 
So l let me just go from in the right corner, right bottom corner, right here. Wow. And some people are just, you can see some people are trying to attend to it. But, you know, that makes this a l even more. Int okay, so think about it. These protesters that are throwing stones while hearing the gunshots, there's an, there's an example of some, there's a de somebody just died right next to them. Like, it's not about maybe we could get sh shots. Like, the, the possibility of them dying is right next to them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand how brave these people are. It's not like they can see somebody that just died from these bullets that are that is being directed at them right in the corner and they're still not running away they're still throwing stones at people that are shooting guns at them i don't know it's like i don't understand how you could have this much balls to do something like that like this is this is pretty crazy these, these people yeah. must have like they have completely run out of patience to be able to do something like this right like they have nothing else right. to lose. Go on, sorry. Yeah, and you said this is in, this is in the city of Marivan in western of Iran, and we talked about it uh, before uh, the um, before this uh, uh, conversation uh, that uh, we heard some news that two ten years uh, kids are killed uh, in this city in, in the city of Marivan, and we said that is not confirmed yet. Not verified yet. Just yes. right now. I, yeah. Yeah, it's not uh, verified yet, but recently, just right now, I saw that some uh, one human rights activist talked to Iran International TV, and they said, yes, two, uh, ten years, uh, kids are killed in the city of Marivan. Well, so that's what I told you. We might be, the Iranian people might at some point need military support if they cannot, uh, uh, if they cannot uh, be uh, strong enough to be against the tank, be against the... Uh, uh, automatic guns, so it's, uh, it's a, it should be a game changer, and at some point they might be need, need military support from other countries as well, and some controlled attacks, some charts, some exactly precisely tar uh, targets. All right, let's go. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna let's go to the next one. What's the next one? Um, okay, so this is the. Uh, oh yeah, this is actually confirms what I was saying before. Let me just. Pause it and go to the beginning of the t tweet and also so this one let me see what number it is so that you this one the the burning one right the ones um let me just play it <laughs> ساعت ده شب باجه بانک شهر یا وصلی گوهرده شک شنبه شب 26 آبانه 98 اینجا هم حکومت نظامی کردن کلی پولیس ریخت همه رو گرفتن دستی کردن بردن اینجا هم آتیس دادن که بگن اشرار آتیس دادن So this was number Sorry I should have told you before playing But it was playing um, This was 0760 This was number 5 Okay So Okay thank you Yeah, let me just. Right. So this this lady, let me just uh, play it on mute while I talk about it. Uh, again, I really appreciate the protesters when they record. She, this camera woman, when she was recording, she gave the city and she gave the date as well. And she was taking uh, a shot, uh, recording a burning video, and she's um, and other people also confirmed that she said that she saw. That this building was set on fire by government forces, right? So she, what she's saying is that government forces had set this building on fire, uh, so that they could blame it on the protesters. And this was in the city of uh, Karaj on November 17th, so three days ago. Uh, again, these are I, I, t like we get some of these videos come with a little bit of a delay, uh, but I can't I can't imagine how much more videos we're gonna get. Uh, you know, as soon as the internet gets connected as well. So again, so she's she. This is report from the ground saying that uh, the protesters are claiming that some of the buildings were set on fire, not by the protesters, but the, by the government itself. Uh, again, we don't know how. We can't verify how accurate this is. Uh, we can't verify which buildings were set on fire by the protesters and which pr buildings were set on fire by the government but we know this is this is a discussion that is being had right so what are your thoughts on this one you know i i want to add something okay uh i i saw a, 
uh, uh, theories about the damaging that uh, cut, cut off the internet uh, caused and the damaging that burning banks, uh, banks or uh, uh, official centers uh, caused. Uh, it's uh, 1 billion 400 damages uh, through uh, cutting off the internet. Right. And it's 58, 58 million dollars through burning the banks, whether the people did it in responsive regime or whether the regime itself did it. So think about it. One, 1 billion 400 dollars compared with 58 million dollars. 1 right. billion 458 million. So even even if the people did uh, burn the bank, bank, that I'm not sure, and it might be just a, a, a angry response, but the the damage that the government itself uh, caused is way more than the damage that uh, that the people did. So, right. so uh, I understand I understand the response of the people, but I cannot understand uh, how damaged the regime and the continuum of this regime. Because uh, for the Iranian people. So, so th here's what the narrative seems to be uh, right now. Again, this is, seems to be based on ideological lines, and, and I don't know how accurate any of this is, but it seems like there's three categories of destruction that people will say who did it, right? So, I think when it comes to the banks and the gas station, um, a lot of a lot of the protesters and pr and the Iranians outside of Iran they give credit to protesters and they're like yes the banks and the gas stations are burned by the protesters and good job doing that that sends a signal to the regime uh, when it comes to burning hospitals it seems like the pro protesters are saying no that's not the people that's the government when it comes to islamic centers and the quran it seems to be based on where your ideology is to, for you to for most people to decide whether that was the people or the government but your point was different your point was like all these destructions on the ground the economical cost of that is a fraction of the economical cost of cutting down the internet a lot of estimates are coming out and numbers are astronomical the amount like imagine cutting the entire internet down, uh, down for, uh, for cutting internet down for uh, the entire country Imagine the number of businesses and the banks and the trades and the travel and all and the stock market and everything that relies on the internet, all of that being shut down. The cost of the economy is astronomical. And every day that they keep the internet down, it just keeps on adding to it. And people, the, the, I've seen some of the estimates and they're insane, right? So the cost of the economy, you're saying that's a lot more than these, uh, any of these destructions, right? Definitely. Yeah, I would like to add something else. We understand the situation. We understand the situation is not a normal situation, but still we have an ethical uh, duty. Our ethical uh, point of view is that nobody is perfect. Even the revolutionary people, they might be do something wrong. They might be they might be burn a hospital that is not correct. Hmm. They might be killing some people, some someone that it should not be. So it doesn't mean that we defend everything that happened. Uh, uh, from the people's side. Right, yeah, right. the people should maybe do something wrong too, but we should understand the situation. We should understand the difference. We should understand the root cause. The root cause is the regime. The root cause is killing people. The root cause is 40 years uh, criminal regime ruling Iran. It's a regime that conquer Iran. It's the regime that hostages Iran. Not, not only Iran, Iraq, Lebanon, Yemen, all the Middle East, uh, they support uh, terrorism as as uh, the United States always saying, is the uh, largest uh, government that's supporting terrorism. So we need we need we need to understand the root cause. The root cause is the regime, but still might be people doing something that is not uh, ethically true. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. So let's uh, let me just play the last tweet and then we could leave it at that. This one is also very significant. This was the first video I saw of people targeting a religious center. So I'm just going to describe it because there's not that much commentary on it. Um, this is the... Number six? Oh, this is... The, hold on. This is... For, let me just see. Sorry, I should tell you first. This is number... Six, yes. Tablo 
All right, so this was in Shiraz, and this is people burned down. To, to The reason why this one was very significant to me is because the camera woman is explaining that this is the burned down offices of the uh, Friday Imam leader um, in Shiraz, right? Uh, which is the mullah that leads the prayers in Fridays in Shiraz. They burned down his office. Um, but the interesting thing to me is that there's nobody attacking the like the people it seemed like in Shiraz for a while I don't know if they still did that or not they took over Shiraz completely and I saw like tweets of coming out from the people it's like Shiraz has fallen like, we took over Shiraz because and you can see that people the people that have burned down the offices they're still around there's not there doesn't seem to be enough uh, government forces to be able to come and respond to this and people are kind of chill here and this was before they moved in the more forces and people are like r r taking out the uh, the, the camera woman is explaining that that they're also not taking out the signs it seemed like for a while Shiraz was completely taken over by the protesters um and the government was overwhelmed i don't know what the situation is there right now but this is this was very intense this is for me that the fact that there wasn't even there wasn't even a battle going between the protesters and the government forces. They were burning that building, and just everybody just stood there, and they were continuing the destruction without any reaction. What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I want to add something about uh, this video. Okay. You know, uh, as you said, uh, he's the office of Imam Jom El, and we know that uh, Friday Imam or Friday um, uh, uh, prayer. Uh, he is not just a religious person. He is a political person. And just before this uh, protest, he said that he said to the government, "If you cannot stop the people, I would stop themselves. I would stop uh, the people myself. Yeah. And I would uh, uh, stand against them. And after the the people protest against him, uh, they send a helicopter to lift uh, the oh, Imam yeah. Jome up from his office, from the building. And when the helicopter uh, uh, try to go away, they start shooting people from the helicopter that was lifting the Imam Jong Air. So oh, yeah. think about it. It's not, it's not just a protest. It's kind of yeah. uh, a genocide when you're shooting people from the helicopter just to save a person. Uh, yeah, I saw we, that we video. Heard, I saw heard that video. Iran that Imam Jome, Imam Jome pro, pro, uh, protecting people. Imam Jome is with the people, but the Imam Jome just to save himself start shooting people with uh, automatic gun. Well, I saw the video of somebody shooting from the helicopter towards the people. I didn't know it was the same location and I didn't know they were that li they were lifting the imam up from this place. Th is that okay? Wow. That's confirmed. That's confirmed this news. Wow. Okay. Actually, I, I should have brought that video that was that I've seen. I actually did tweet that on my Twitter account. By the way, follow me. There was the helicopter uh, that lifted Imam Jom Air, but the news that the helicopter that lifted Imam Jom Air fired the people directly and killed some people is uh, confirmed. All right. Uh, by the way, um, so let's just end this here. But are you tweeting about this? Should people follow you on Twitter to see, like, what's your Twitter account? My Twitter account is uh, Kosravi Farsani, K H O S R A V I Farsani, F A R S A N I. I'm not sure to tweet about this or not. I, I'm definitely that retweet some tweet about it, but I'm not sure that tweeted myself. Okay, but I'm just going to show people your Twitter account so that they could follow you as well if they want to interact with you and ask you questions um, and follow you. I follow you uh, here. I have your Twitter account now showing up on the screen. Um, so I encourage people to follow you and, you know, if you... And interact with you if they if they have any questions. Okay, uh, but anyway, did you did you wanna did you wanna add anything um, before we go? Yeah, nothing. Just I I I'm pretty sure that the Iranian people need support. Need support from other people, but because some of the people still not joining the the other people, they are still waiting for something. I think we cannot wait anymore. We need to be gathered together. We need to be unified, all all the people. If the ocean of the Iranian people start moving, nothing can stop them. Nothing can stop them. Also, the Iranian people need support from the world community, from the United Nations, from other uh, uh, countries, from the European Union, from the United States. 
I hope that not, but maybe at some point the Iranian people need uh, military support to uh, control targeted uh, attacks. And it, it should be a game changer too. I hope not, I hope not, but the Iranian people need support. They are killing people in a mass number. It, it's not just a protest, it's a real revolution in all aspects. It's a genocide. It's a, it's a very sad situation. Hopefully the people of Iran can free their countries, can free uh, themselves from being hostages. And thank you so much, Armin John. Oh, thank you. Um, and again, I'm not going to, the reason why I'm not commenting on that, I'm just going to let you comment on that is because that's a whole can, of, another can of worms that I'm not going to open here. I already went over that in another podcast also about going over predictions over uh, other government intervention. Uh, but that will be another two hour episode if we get into that. But but I'll link to that if people want to know my opinions on that in the description. Um, but again, let us know what you think. Uh, comment below. Uh, follow up us on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter if you want to see more, um, you know, commentary on the protests and other things. Um, and again, so and also by by the way, subscribe to our YouTube um, channel if you want to see more discussions like this. Anyways, thank you so much, Abbas. I really appreciate your time. I really took advantage. You've been very generous with your time. Uh, I know you're not getting much sleep these days. Uh, so so thank you so much for for being with us. And hopefully- thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And maybe we could have you again one day, would you, if uh, for another topic, if you're interested? Sure. Yeah. In the uh, morning, I, I'm free. I okay. would, I would be happy. All right. Okay. I'm gonna stop recording.